This is the new Volkswagen Golf, and it's designed to be the perfect daily driver. Though if it was a golf club, it wouldn't be a driver at all. That's a one-trick pony. It would be a seven iron, because you can actually use it for long, medium, or even very short work. And that's the thing about this car, you know, it's designed as the great all-rounder. Now, like I said, this is the new car, but you're probably thinking, Matt, it doesn't actually look all that new. Well, revisions are quite minimal. They include a new bumper, you've got a new bumper at the back as well, and LED tail light. The starting price is the same as before, around £17,500. If you click up there to go to carwire.co.uk, you can compare offers and buy a price you're confident in. So, I'm just going to leave the golf club on the floor and hopefully my caddy will pick that up later. So then, this revised golf. Here on the inside, it looks... Yeah, it looks a lot like before. Yes, there are a few new trims here and there, but it's essentially the same. You do get this new shiny infotainment screen though, and it's just got a crisper, sharper display, and it's actually faster to load different pages. And if you click up there, you can see my full infotainment video review of it. This Golf interior is just very nice and simple to use. It's comfortable, everything is where you'd expect it to be, and yeah, quality, hmm, you know, on the whole, it's very nice. Speaking of quality, look, nice damped glove box and the glove box the itself is quite large plus door bins are absolutely massive i mean look large bottle of water fits in there no problem at all and there's some extra space although not that much in the armrest and you've got a couple of cup holders here and another cubby here which is ideal i'd say for your mobile phone keep it out of sight while you're driving so you don't get distracted now in the back the golf has always been fairly impressive one of the advantages of its square, boxy, somewhat maybe boring shape is that it means that rear passengers have plenty of room. So yeah, headroom is good. Look at that whole hand, the whole hand, people. It's pretty impressive. And legroom is good as well. Now you can carry three adults in the back at a push. It's not the comfiest, but it's about as good as you can expect for this size of car. One of the minor issues, if I can get my foot back <laughs> is this hump in the floor down there which just eat into foot space as you just saw so yeah it's really spacious for this kind of car in the back the golf square shape also pays dividends when carrying stuff as well as people so the boot capacity is pretty much average for this class but it really makes great use of that available space so yeah there's plenty of room in here now you might be wondering oh no that's quite a high load lip map but don't worry, Volkswagen have thought about that and you get an adjustable boot floor and there's hardly any load lip at all. There's lots of other nice features in here as well. So we've got tethering points here. We've got hooks there. There's also a 12 volt socket there. And now a lot of you think, Matt, why do I need a 12 volt socket in the boot of a car? Well, it does mean that people in the back seats can actually charge their mobile devices if they want to. Also, if you've got a dog and it's shedding hairs, you can plug in a Hoover and then get your car Nice and clean. Oh yeah, see? Makes perfect sense. So better to have it than not, eh? Another thing is, if you've got an elderly dog, this golf's boot height is actually quite low, so it should be quite easy for your old pooch to jump into the back. Other features I like about this car are the way you get a ski hatch there. There we go. And look at this. When I fold the seats down, if I pull up the headrests, you will see, can you see the difference there? you get a pretty much flat load bay. You just gotta remember to do the headrests. Now, if you want more detail on this car's practicality, click up there to watch my detailed video on it. You'll see how much stuff you can cram into this car's boot, what it's like with three adults in the back, and just how easy it is to install a baby seat. Now though, it's time to hit the road. Volkswagen may well have revised the Golf, but they have done almost nothing to the way this car drives. So yeah, feels pretty much the same as before. And that's not really a bad thing because it's an absolutely fabulous all-rounder. Now, something like a Ford Focus may be a little bit more fun, but really, in this class of car, that doesn't matter. The Golf goes about its business brilliantly. So it steers sharply, it grips well enough, the control weighting's perfect, there's not too much of a blind spot there because you've got a handy little quarter light, and the view out the back window, that's impressive as well. And all that makes this Golf dead easy to manoeuvre around town. It's also nice to cruise around and you can just rest your arm there and on this soft, squidgy armrest here and just blat up the motorway in total comfort because the seats are good, there's hardly any wind or road noise, and it's altogether rather relaxing. 
What also helps with the comfort is the suspension. So it does a really good job of ironing out the bumps in the road. You can actually upgrade it to an adaptive system, but really that's overkill. I think the standard setup is more than good enough. Now, one of the few changes that Volkswagen has made to this car is that now if you go for an automatic, it's a seven speed across the range. All cars as standard get a six speed manual, apart from the entry level engine, which just comes with a five. You wanna avoid that engine anyway. And that does bring me on to the engines, because another new thing about this car is the fact you can get a 1.5 litre turbo petrol, and that replaces the old 1.4 litre turbo petrol. And that, for me, will be the engine to have. This particular car has the one litre turbo petrol with 110 horsepower. The only problem is that being a three cylinder, it does sound a bit rough when you rev it. This car is supposed to do 60 miles per gallon with this engine. I'm getting 42. And anyway, if you do lots of miles, you're gonna want one of the diesels. And the 1.6 litre diesel is probably enough. Although the two litre is smoother and probably a bit better for towing. Not everything about the new Volkswagen Golf is great. Here's five annoying things about it. Entering a full UK postcode into the sat nav is a bit convoluted. You can't just do it in the straightforward search bar. You have to go and put it into the address, go into city, and then choose postcode, and then flip between numbers and letters. So much for German efficiency. There's these handy little dividers in the boot which create pockets, but there's gonna come a point where you're gonna think, where the heck did I leave that divider? People in the front of the Golf get treated to nice soft touch materials on the door tops, but those in the back get cheap leaning brittle plastics instead. Oh, and the rear windows don't go all the way down. What is it with manufacturers putting fake exhausts on cars these days? I mean, this is a one litre, yet they're trying to make it look like it's got a five litre V8. While the automatic gearbox is pretty impressive, it can be a bit jerky at manoeuvring speeds. Whoop. Thankfully, there's still plenty to like about this Golf that help make up for all this. The emergency city braking can now also detect pedestrians. Thank God for that. The door pockets are lined with felt, even here in the back, so that things don't rattle about when you're driving. The optional traffic jam assist can automatically brake, accelerate, and even steer the car for you. Let's take the straight out of boring city driving. Though you do have to keep your hands on the wheel, otherwise it'll disengage. There's a little weight on the end of the cord for the parcel shelf to keep it nice and taut, and it's actually got these rubberized veins on it so that it doesn't make a knocking sound when it bounces against the interior trim when you're cornering. You can now get the Golf with Volkswagen's active info display, which essentially means digital dials. Obviously, this car doesn't have it, but to give you an idea, this is what it looks like. Now, if you click up there, you can go to carwow.co.uk for more information and to save an average of £1,900 on the new Volkswagen Golf. So then, what's my verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Volkswagen Golf. It might not be the most exciting car in its class, but it's still a great all-round family car. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click on our logo to subscribe. If you click on the video windows, you can watch our detailed practicality and infotainment videos for the new Volkswagen Golf. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was the song Golf from the car's infotainment system.